Today I want to share with you a bit of a personal uh, journey of mine and just remember today because I was filling up some paperwork uh, for a business award and one of the questions that was asked, I was asked was what are your dreams uh, in dentistry? And then I thought about it for a while and I realized that I think I fulfilled my dream by just coming here in Australia and working as a dentist and that made me realize how good we have it here compared to a lot of other areas. Sometimes I hear dentists, you know, whether um, at work or from different forums, uh, complaining or having concerns about certain things in the workplace. And I think, reflecting back on myself, I was so lucky that I came from a background where I studied dentistry and maybe practiced one year of dentistry in a developing country. Egypt is a developing country, though it has massive, big civilization and history and one of the best countries you can live in the world, but sadly in the last 60 or 70 years it's going through a phase where it's considered a developing country. So I want to share with you some of what I went through as a student and um, when I first started working as a dentist compared to what we have here. Because luckily for me, that made me enjoy and appreciate everything we have here, which a lot of dentists, if they haven't been in that situation before, might take for granted. So hopefully it might change your perspective on that a little bit. So for example, uh, I went to a university that was funded by the government. Um, so if you have high marks in high school, you get to attend these universities and you don't pay a lot in it. But on exchange, you will have to purchase a lot, most of your all of your dental material, all of your instruments, handpieces, everything you have to purchase yourself and you have to carry it by yourself every day from home to, univers to the university. So for example, I would wake up in the morning, I would have a big trade toolbox and I would fill it up with my package instruments in a sterilization bag that has been sterilized at uni the day before. I would have my impression trays, my amalgams, we used to use amalgams back then, composites, bond, everything I have to purchase myself. Then I would have to carry this bag and get out of my house. I would usually take public transport, uh, jump into public transport, get to uni, carry this bag, then go to the, to the clinic and set up my tray, set up everything. I have to buy my own napkins, my own drapes and everything as well. And then I'll get the patient, treat the patient, unpack everything, package it together. The only thing they will do it for you, maybe it's different now, back in my time, is they will do the autoclaving part for you. So they will sterilize your instrument, they write your name on it, so you make sure you get it back at the end. You will oil your own handpiece that you purchased as well, and you sterilize it yourself, and do all of that yourself. And then, at the end of the day, you pick up your toolbox again, and go all the way in public transport, going back home. And you repeat that every day. Uh, patients as well, I mean, I remember I had uh, an exam, I have to do, um, complete denture or secondary impression or by block on a patient and patient did not come as agreed to the day so I had to take my car drive two hours into really very tight uh, poor suburban areas and try to knock on doors I know the patient name I know which coffee shop he sits on in the morning just to find this patient until I managed to find him put him in my car take him to uni so I can finish my exam so um, sometimes you'll work on a dental chair and this dental chair the suction will not be working, it's just dead. High speed, so speed suction is normally you do a crown prep, mouth fill up with water, patient sit up, spit into a spit tube, go back, and they will do this as if you're doing abs exercise for the entire length of the hour, and you have to stop every five seconds or every 10 seconds for this to happen. So that was very common from where I started, uh, or the time when I started dentistry. Then when I started working, uh, as I mentioned in another video, I had nine jobs changed in two years, but some of the jobs back then as well is work for half day because they didn't have an autoclave. Um, they have like a sterilizer, which is like a boiling water kind of machine. So after four hours, you know, uh, you realize there's no proper sterilization, then you leave. Back then you, in Egypt, you can't really report to anyone. No one really cares to report to, there's nothing would happen. Then I worked in another practice as well where the dentist was a complete fraud and just, you know, um, probably doing a lot of uh, things that would be very, very questionable and deceiving patients a lot. Um, um, so just having good quality equipment that's functioning was a luxury. Um, going back 
or coming back to Australia and, and working where I'm working now in my own practice or uh, working in other practices, I appreciate everything we have. I appreciate the high suction, the low suction. I appreciate having a nice function dental chair, having nice DAs that can help you setting up your room and doing simple things for you. So nothing I take for granted. I mean, I was lucky to have this background because it, it made me and it still makes me appreciate everything that I have here. And, um, you know, I'm, and I hope if you haven't been in that background before, maybe if you go to do like uh, charity work, which we, I used to do as well, is going to villages and do dentistry in areas where you have minimal tools and minimal equipment, maybe you'll come back and appreciate what you have more. But anyway, I thought I was just wanted to share this with you. And if you find this helpful or help you or help one of your colleagues or your friends, make sure you share it with your friends and colleagues. If you wanna hear more about my videos, please subscribe to my channel and I will share with you or notify you when more videos are released. Thank you so much for listening to me. It means a lot to me.